Happy Wednesday, Flower Mounds family. Um, I hope that for those of you who um, are listening to this around nine o'clock, you might be willing to join us for our coffee hour. It's the first one that we're having, just a time to check in via a Zoom call to see one another's faces and just to see how everybody's doing. No big agenda, just really uh, joys and concerns and just to um, connect with one another in fellowship. So hope you can join us. That Zoom uh, call information is on the daily email. Our devotional for this Wednesday is from Psalm 25, and we're going to start with verse 6 and go through verse 10. So let us listen together for Psalm 25. It's a teachable moment about God's mercy. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been of old do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. So as I listened to this psalmist today, um, one of my, it reminded me of one of my favorite authors. Her name is Brene Brown. And right before this whole pandemic happened, she came out with a podcast. Um, it's called Unlocking Us. And in it, she speaks of what she terms uh, terrible first times, TFTs. And terrible first times are the first time you go through something, uh, something um, that you have never experienced before that's unusual and it throws you off guard. And um, what ends up happening in the midst of a terrible first time is so often we go into a spiral of shame and guilt for not getting it right, not being good enough, and um, for uh, not being able to perform at the level that we would for something that we would expect to be good at. So one, there's three things that she says to do in a terrible first time. The first is to normalize it. The second is to put it in perspective. And the third is to check your expectations. To normalize it means to say to ourselves, this is not the norm. We're learning what is happening and we need to recognize it. This is new, it feels weird, maybe even feel anxious or afraid and kind of naming those feelings that you have in that time. The perspective of putting something in perspective is recognizing that that feeling that you're having is not a feeling you're going to have forever because a lot of times um, when we're experiencing something new, we think, oh, this is terrible. I just need to give up, right? I just, I can't, I can't do this. And we feel frustrated and we want to give up, but to have perspective in that is to kind of recognize that this is one moment in a, a larger perspective of what is going on. And not to deny the feelings that you're having, but to uh, recognize that you can have a perspective that allows you a deeper understanding. And then the third thing is to not set yourself up for expectations, that you're going to do this perfectly uh, the first time around, or that you're going to totally going to crush it the first time, right? So really, we are in a terrible first time. <laughs> And to have expectations on ourselves that we are going to get this right and that we are going to be so good at this in the midst of an unprecedented situation in our world is unrealistic. But I think so often we feel like as Christians that we have to be perfect and to get it right, right? To, to, to be faithful, to not fail, to uh, do the best that we can and be the best Christian that we possibly can be. And when we aren't, we spiral into that shame and that guilt that we are not meeting God's expectations. And that there's other people maybe even looking at us for that level of faithfulness. So what I hear in Psalm 25 is this, we need to be teachable. 
<laughs> we need to be teachable more than perfect. It says that God instructs sinners in the way and leads the humble in what is right, teaches the humble way. It asks for pardon when we have guilt because we can be taught in the way that we should choose. So I don't know about you, but it's easy for me right now to go into these spirals of not being good enough, not um, doing this well enough, not um, even looking at other or colleagues or what other people are doing and comparing myself that I'm not getting it right. And everybody else is, right? It's like everybody else knows what to do in this pandemic except for me. You know, I feel like I should be having some great family time and, and you know, I told myself this was going to be such a great opportunity to like get in shape and get out there every day and exercise that, you know, I just haven't had time to do or that the house is going to be spotless because now I've got all this time to clean the house and we're on week five now, right, of the social distancing and sheltering place. I'm still not exercising every day. My spiritual disciplines are still not where I want them to be and my house is still not exactly perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've, I've bleached the doorknob, so that we're good there. But sometimes in this together time, it's just too much, right? We lose our tempers. Sometimes social distancing can raise our tensions, even with our own families. So this is my thought for the day. In our prayer life, let's be teachable, not perfect. Let's be teachable. Let's not expect ourselves to get this right during this imperfect time. Let's not wallow in guilt that we're not meeting our goals or we're not being the perfect parents. Let's just own that we don't know what we're doing and be teachable by God to let ourselves be forgiven when we mess up or we lose our tempers or we don't meet our expectations or even what we feel like God's expectations are of us. Let's be humble in knowing that none of us know what we're doing and find some grace in the truth and the mercy that God gives us so that we can give it to others as well as ourselves. I hope today that you will let yourself have some teachable moments rather than some perfect moments. Peace be with you, my friends.